नमस्कार आई एम हियर टू टीच यू टू डायमेंशनल फाइनेट एलिमेंट एनालिसिस माय नेम इज सुदशील घोष आई एम फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग फैकल्टी ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एम जी एम यूनिवर्सिटी औरंगाबाद दिस लेक्चर्स ऑन टू डायमेंशनल फाइनेट एलिमेंट एनालिसिस विल बी कंडक्टेड ओवर मल्टीपल स्टेजेस इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू कवर नंबर वन ट्राइंगुलर एलिमेंट फॉर्मुलेशन नंबर टू थ्योरी ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी नंबर थ्री CST for plane stress and strain analysis and solving a numerical problem there so in the series of lectures these four things will be covered and we are in this lecture going to cover triangular element for magnetism so let us talk about a field variable what is a field variable a field variable could be a displacement for example okay displacement in the x direction y direction so this is a field variable dependent upon two independent variables that is x and y so this is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 and alpha 2x plus alpha 3y we will remember that these alpha i is the coefficient of a linear interpolating polynomial for the field variable so while linear we are talking about linear interpolating polynomial uh, if there could be quadratic element interpolating polynomials also so for the simplest case we will take linear interpolating polynomial so this is how the triangular element looks like there will be uh, will for the sake of assumption will uh, we say that this triangular element has a small thickness and the vertices of this triangular element have coordinates x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 as you can see on screen so if i talk about the interpolating polynomial so this is the interpolating polynomial see phi equal to Alpha one, alpha two x plus alpha three y. This is the interpolating polynomial, and I can write this interpolating polynomial in this format. This is phi equal to this one x y alpha one alpha two alpha three vertically, and I will say this matrix P into matrix alpha. So this uh, P is one x and y. So now, if I just values of the field variable are known at these three points, so now the values of the field variable are known at x one. So at x1, y1, the value of the field variable is phi1. x2, y2, the value of the field variable is phi2. At x3, y3, the value of the field variable is uh, phi3. So uh, I will have these three equations: phi1 equal to this one, phi2 equal to this one, phi3 equal to this one. So we will have these three equations. So in these three equations, if I write in the matrix format. I will have this vector y one phi two phi three equal to you know this matrix then alpha one alpha two alpha three uh, this matrix and it will be written in shorter matrix format as phi equal to g into alpha. Now g is a known matrix here, phi is the known matrix here. The only unknown which is here is alpha. This these coefficients. These are the coefficients that we have to determine. The coefficients are not known to the. The interpolating polynomial is dependent upon the coefficients. All right. So this alpha is the unknown. So I put the alpha in the left hand side, and I can write this as g inverse phi. So you can see here, I am trying to do g inverse phi here. So the field variable, if I put this into the you know earlier equation, so I can write it is p. Remember that it was p. Into alpha, and I have been I have been able to find out. So now I will be able to write it out as p into alpha. So an alpha is g inverse phi. So it will be p into g inverse phi. So this is how it is. So now I what I do is I just group this p and g inverse together, and I call it as n. Now please look at p. P is one x y, which is actually one single row with three elements. So it is a One cross three matrix, and G inverse is a three cross three matrix. Okay, so one cross three into three cross three again it will become one cross three. So n we get this matrix n and n with three, so n one, n two, and n three. Okay, and they multiply this by five. So and I I am I am I told you that this n is p into G inverse. All right. So now it is to be noted here that we are we have been able by this equation. We have been able to express our field variable phi as follows. This is phi as n one phi one, this 
n2 phi 2 plus n3 phi 3. But now the question is, do I know uh, what are the algebraic expressions for n1, n2 and n3? Definitely n1, n2 and n3 are the uh, functions which are dependent upon x and y. Why? Because here if you see this expression, phi 1 is a constant, phi 2 is a constant, phi 3 is a constant. The only uh, variable things are n1, n2 and n3. So, we will go ahead and we are going to try to calculate the inverse of this matrix G. Now, remember this G, we had this G here, alpha equal to G inverse phi. So, the G, in, G matrix is that 1, x1, uh, y1, 1, x2, y2, 1, x3, y3. This is the G matrix here. On the top of the screen, you can see that. And so, what I am going to do is, you know, finding this matrix inverse and I can write this inverse as like this, you know, you know, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3 and outside the matrix I write 1 upon 2A. Incidentally, very interestingly, A happens to be the area of the triangular element. Now, the triangular element where the known, these, these coordinates are known, the vertices of the triangular element are known. I know x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. So, the area of the triangular element is going to be constant. Okay. So, a1 is constant because x1, x2, x3, x, uh, you know, y1, y2, y3 are known. So, a1 is uh, dependent upon x1, x2 and y3. You see x2, x3, y2, y3. a1 expression is constant. b1 is constant. c1 is constant. And similarly, a2, b2, c2, a3, b3, c3 are all constants here. So, this is a constant matrix, all right. So, the area of the triangle is a constant matrix, it is a constant value, all right. It is not dependent on x and y. Now, I you remember that n, we have written n, yes. So, n was p into g inverse and n is expressed as n1, n2, n3. So, if I just, you know, look back and if I just look back, so what will happen? I will get this n1 as a terms of x and y as a1, b1, x plus c1, y and phi2 will be a2, b2, x plus c2, y. So, and this multiplied by 1 upon 2, so these are the expressions for n1, n2 and n3. Now, since n1 depends on x and y, n2 depends on x and y, n3 depends on x and y and then these will be helpful for depend, you know, calculating the values of my coefficients, please understand that I have n1, n2 and n3 and n1, n2 and n3 are the interpolating functions which have created this expression phi is n1, phi1, n2, phi2 and n3, phi3. These n1, n2 and n3, these are known as the two-dimensional shape functions for the field variable phi okay so this is what it is now if this is the expression for n1 n2 and n3 i can take out the partial differentiation of n1 n2 and n3 with respect to x and with respect to y so these are the expressions that we will have we will have del n partial n1 by partial n x as b1 upon 2a b2 upon 2a so this is what will, will be happening and if i uh, can do this then I can also create partial differentiation of phi with respect to x. Phi depends on x and y. So, phi with respect to x, this will be this expression and phi with respect to y, it will be this expression. So, we have been able to derive the partial expressions uh, or differentiation of phi with respect to x and differentiation of phi with respect to y. All these are both partial differentiations. We have the expressions like these. Thank you very much for attending to this lecture. We will cover in the next lecture the theory of elasticity which will be an important part of this uh, series.